How's it going out there, YouTube? My name is Jesse, and I am back for another comic book video. And this time, I'm doing what I think is a very interesting topic. I am going to be going over the uh, my list for the 10 most powerful objects that are as powerful or more powerful than the Infinity Gauntlet. Now, as I describe these objects, that'll be up for you to decide on that one ultimately. Now, if you like this video, once you get to the end of it, go ahead and give that like button a click. It always helps with the ego. And if this video is interesting, maybe you can share it with your friends. That being said, let's get on with this. In the Marvel Universe, there is a whole host of powerful objects. Some that give you godlike abilities and some that can make you akin to a god itself, like the Infinity Gauntlet. This is going to be the list of the ten that I have figured out and have gone over on what I think, if used against the Infinity Gauntlet, might actually be able to stop it. Now, the first object on this list is probably the most powerful of everything, but I can't find its connection specifically to the 616 storyline. I can't prove if it's pure canon, but despite what Thanos did with this power it might be just like next to, to canon what I'm using as number 10 is the heart of the universe coming in at number 10 the heart of the universe the heart of the universe first appeared in Marvel Universe The End, number two, in 2003. Now, Marvel's executive editor, Tom Beverut, has stated that the storyline The End, six-part series, is not part of the official Marvel continuity, which is too bad because it's a really good story. Uh, the heart of the universe is the end-all, be-all. When Thanos got the heart of the universe he basically became god ended the universe and either restarted a new one or restarted the old one he ended everything and then began it again at the very end of the story um him and warlock are the only two that are left from the former and they have a great philosophical discussion if you know about Thanos and Warlock, if you don't know much about them, then their discussion doesn't mean quite as much. Now, everything else on this list is all 616, that is for sure. Well, they've existed in other universes as well, but they're definitely in the 616 universe. The next three all come from the land of sorcery, the Wand of Latum, the Dark Hold and the Eye of Agamondo. And I hope I'm saying that last one right. Coming in at number nine, the Wand of Watoom. The Wand of Watoom first appeared in Amazing Spider Man Annual number two in 1965. The Wand of Watoom. Apparently, there's supposed to be six of them, and they're called the Wicked Wands of Watoom. They grant you near omnipotent power. Uh, the wand is controlled by mere thought and it is primarily used in enhancing, multiplying, gathering, focusing, and redirecting mystical energy. It can block mystical attacks or absorb their energy to heal the wielder of the wand and can also unleash a defensive blast of an unimaginable power or erect a barrier. This thing has control of the elements and can open doors and portals to other dimensions and when used properly it can scry any person, place, or thing that it is familiar with and scrying is a way of locating things that you don't know where they are but they do have to be familiar to the wand. Coming in at number 8, the Darkhold. 
The Darkhold first appeared in Marvel Spotlight number 4 in 1972. It's also known as the Book of Sin or the Bible of Black Magic. The Darkhold possesses many powerful and black magic spells written by an ancient demigod who charted all of these spells down. The Darkhold is responsible for all werewolves and vampires and can also control zombies. The Darkhold wants to be read because once you start to read it, you lose your soul and become possessed by the demon Chiton, I think that's how it's pronounced, which actually resides in the book and was written by him. With the Darkhold, you have access to Limbo, and you can also control the world of others and conjure Dark Force. There is a passage in the book that allows you to destroy all vampires, but that's never been used. The Eye of Agamondo first appeared in Strange Tales 127 in 1964. The Eye of Agamondo is made by the magician Agamondo himself, one of the th one of the three Venetians. The Eye of Agamondo is one of the few mystical items that can go along with the magician in his astral form and be useful in astral form and as in regular form. It has an all-revealing light that can dispel illusions and peer into a man's soul. The it has the ability to play back recent events, give you a form of mystical telepathy can make you a stronger astral user can track mis phys physical or magical items it can weaken evil it can make portals levitate objects transport you to anywhere in the universe channel life energy to heal people and in one case it has actually been able to reverse the flow of time now, coming in at number six, I'm not sure if it's a weapon of the gods or an elder weapon, but it is immensely powerful for what it can do. Number six is the Tacticon. Coming in at number six, the Tacticon. The Tacticon first appeared in Avengers Initiative number one in 2007. The Tacticon is considered are classified as an Omega level weapon with Omega level powers. The Tacticon has the ability to analyze and change itself to fight the weakness of whatever opponent it goes up against. The stronger the opponent, the more exotic the weaponry that it produces. It is said that the Tacticon may be as powerful as Thor's hammer or even a cosmic cube. Now, coming in at number five and number four are both weapons that are used by the gods. One more hands-on than the other one. Uh, number five is Maomir, Thor's hammer. And number four is the destroyer armor. Coming in at number five, Mjolnir. Mjolnir first appeared in Journeys into Mystery number 83 in 1962. There is so many things that this hammer is capable of that even I was not fully aware of. First of all, the, the hammer used to have the ability to travel through time, but that was stripped by Cain the Conqueror. What, the pow what this hammer can do is there's so much to it. Weather manipulation, you can fly using it. You can have a God Blast, an Anti-Force Blast, a Thermal Blast. The hammer can produce a Thermal Blast, which is even able to take down celestial creatures. Barriers, energy sensing, energy absorption and redirecting, teleportation, resurrection, um, alpha particles, negate mystic energy, channel cosmic energy, can make you invisible or intangible, transmigration of souls, life absorption, illusion detection, there's just so much 
that this thing can do more than I can even go into, which makes Mjolnir a very powerful and very devastating weapon. In fact, when Thor used it in the Infinity Gauntlet, he almost took down Thanos. It was just his lack of knowing what the hammer was fully capable of is the only thing that stopped him, because it was a substitute Thor, not the original. Coming in at number four, the Destroyer Armor. The Destroyer Armor first appeared in the Journeys into Mystery 118 in 1965. The Destroyer Armor is also kind of a wearable Maomir. Um, e either a spirit of a sentient being or a sentient being can don the Destroyer Armor and it will grant you superhuman strength speed, stamina, durability. In fact, the Destroyer Armor is practically invulnerable. Superhuman agility and reflexes. Despite the size, this thing can move faster and quicker than some of the most agile beings on the planet Earth. It can fly at 770 miles per hour. It also has energy protection that comes from its face where a normal uh, face would be if the destroyer can charge up its power beam to its highest level it is even capable of destroying Uru which is the material that the Thor's hammer is made out of it has a class strength of 100 plus and the strength varies based on the person who's fighting so, as the strength level of his enemy increases, so does the strength level of the armor. The only weakness, so to speak, that the armor would have is if you don't have an extreme willpower, the armor's... What is it? The, the life force of the armor itself will dominate whoever is controlling it. The only people who have been able to counteract this have been Thor and Odin. Coming in at number three, it is an object that is as powerful as it is old. I'm not quite sure how old it is exactly. But number three is the Black Vortex. Coming in at number three, the Black Vortex. The Black Vortex first appeared in Legendary Star-Lord number 5 in 2015. The Black Vortex has the ability to grant you incredible cosmic powers. What it does is it releases your full cosmic potential. Um, based on what your powers are, you get a enhancement of those that are akin to a god-like power. Now, it shows you a vision of your future and what you would look like if you submit to the Black Vortex. And you simply say, I submit to the Black Vortex. I don't know if the Vortex gains anything from you submitting, but it will unlock the powers. Now, you can willingly give up the powers and sometimes some of the enhancement that you gained from the vortex can remain like with Iceman he has the ability to turn his body into organic ice which he received from the black vortex and still has now even though he does not, no longer has the enchantment um, over time and exertion the power that the vortex gave you will eventually diminish Many have described this as being the most dangerous object in the entire universe. Number two is the Ultimate Nullifier. Coming in at number two, the Ultimate Nullifier. The Ultimate Nullifier first appeared in Fantastic Four number 50 in 1966. It is described as the universe's most devastating weapon. The Ultimate Nullifier has the ability to completely and utterly eliminate any target the wielder chooses and the wielder itself if their mind isn't powerful enough. In the hands of someone like Galactus, he, he has the ability to use the Ultimate Nullifier to destroy entire timelines from beginning to end. And... 
he can recreate a multiverse, which is one of the other things. Although previously unknown, the nullifier seems to be an aspect of Galactus. Where the it's not exactly explained why, but Galactus can effortless, effortlessly recall the nullifier to himself by merely willing it to come back to him. Now, coming in at number one has been a confusing thing in the comic books, to say the least. Being able to harness into their power is akin to having the Infinity Gauntlet itself, but as we've learned over the years that these objects might actually be sentient. Coming in at number one is the Cosmic Cube. Coming in at number one, the Cosmic Cube. The Cosmic Cube first appeared in Tales of Suspense, number 79, in 1966. The Cosmic Cube is also known as the Wishing Cube. It can make the wielder's innermost desires a reality, but it does take a while, it does take a little while to master the control of the Cosmic Cube. You just can't grab one and all of a sudden be able to start using them. The Cosmic Cube draws its powers from the Beyonders itself. There are other forms of like Cosmic Cubes that are different sizes which are known as Cosmic Container Units which have the same powers. Having a Cosmic Cube is just like having the Infinity Gauntlet. It can change reality itself and there is still a debate on whether the Cosmic Cubes are actually sentient or not, but there does seem to be more there does seem to be evidence more and more that maybe some of them are. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on these powerful objects. It certainly does throw the Marvel Universe into a gigantic skew knowing that there are so many powerful objects. A mm, couple of them possibly universe ending. Well, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I always enjoy doing research. So, until next time, I'll be seeing you.